How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, let's get our Bibles and be prepared to study the last verses here in the book of Titus. My Bible is open to Titus chapter 3 in the very last verses. If you can, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Titus in chapter 3. Maybe today we will complete our study. We may have to spill over to Monday. We'll have to find out. While you're getting your Bible there and turn to Titus 3, also get something on which to jot some notes. I'll be giving all five words beginning with the letter R today to complete our our outline to the final paragraph here in the book of Titus. While you're getting your Bible there, get something on which not only to take notes, but jot down some contact information so that I can put some gospel tracts into your hand. I'll say more about that here in just a minute, but let me begin this way. Years ago, there was an American statesman. I didn't say politician. I said statesman. And there's a big difference. This man at 94 was asked the question, who did he think was the greatest personality of his era? Here was his answer. I'm going to quote it now. Ready? Quote, the greatest personality is the fellow who does his job every day. The mother who has children and gets up to get them breakfast and keeps them clean and off to school. It's the fellow who keeps the streets clean. The unknown soldiers, millions of them, end quote. Ah, that statesman was Bernard Baruch, and I think he saw things clearly. The passage of Scripture before us today deals with some very little-known, even unknown gospel workers. They're simply faithful to the Lord and faithful to the task of sharing the gospel of Christ. Their lives were as routine as yours and mine, but they were mightily used of God. That's how the work of the gospel, that's how the work of missions gets done. It's accomplished by unsung, faithful disciples. Hey, we got to ask the question. The faithful disciple, does that describe you? Does that describe me? Get your Bible and join me in Titus, please, chapter 3. I mentioned the gospel tracts a moment ago. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And the one in my hand right now is entitled, When You Meet God. When You Meet God. My friend, all of us will one day stand before the Lord, small and great. Books shall be opened. There will be a time when we will meet God and eternity and the rewards of serving God will be dealt with there. We need to know, we need to help people know if they are ready to meet God or not. This gospel track, When You Meet God, begins this way. Someday you must meet God. He is holy. He hates sin. And there's some Bible verses that are there. And the opening part of this track talks about the sinfulness of man and what God says about that. But the second part of the track says, God wants to forgive your sins. But ask the question, how can God, who is holy, forgive and accept lost, guilty sinners? Someone must bear the sinner's sin, pay the penalty for them. It goes on to say that that's why Christ came to be our sin bearer and our savior. Here's a great, great, clear gospel track. When you meet God, I want to put it into your hands. Now, listen, friend, at the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give three ways by which you can contact us and give to us your name and your mailing address. Please do that today. I will send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. This one, When You Meet God, will be in there. You're going to find a ton of great tools to communicate the gospel to people that are around you. There's over 40 tracks in that sample packet. Let's you and I become partners. Please do that today. If you can't stay to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc. The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open there, Titus chapter 3, beginning of verse 12, the Bible says this, When I shall send Artemis unto thee in Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me at Nicolaopolis, for I have determined there to winter. 
bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them, and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they may be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be unto you all. Amen. Stop, please, right there. Those are the final verses here in the book of Titus. My title for this last paragraph here is this, Our Companion Life. Our Companion Life. In chapter 3, Paul so far has addressed this going through the chapter. He's addressed our civic life, our converted life, our cross-cultural life, our confronting life, and now our companion life. The people spoken of here in verses 12 to 15 are members of a larger gospel team, or really a missionary team. Missionary work throughout the book of Acts was almost always done as a teamwork, though there are examples of people like, oh, Philip the Evangelist, who seems to have worked solo, but the vast majority of missionary work was done through the team ministry effort. I've been using some words beginning with the letter R. I'm going to have five of them all told. Yesterday, I used the word relief. Titus was going to be relieved there, verse 12 says, by either Artemis or Tychicus. And then I used the word rest yesterday. Paul was going to rest at uh, Nicopolis for the winter, and he wanted Titus to join him there. But now, here in verse 13... My next R word is the word refresh. Listen to verse 13 again. It says this, Bring Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. Paul said that two gospel workers, Zenos and Apollos, would be coming to Crete, and it appears that they were just stopping there and using Crete as a stopping point. And these two men may also have been headed to meet Paul. I don't know. But when they arrived, Paul said, Titus and the believers on Crete were to refresh these two men and get them on their way again and evidently do it quickly. The words in verse 13, the two words, nothing wanting, mean that whatever the physical needs of these two workers had, then the believers on Crete were to help supply their their needs. They were not to leave Crete without the food and clothing and even perhaps some money to uh, required for their journey. Now, that's my word refresh from verse 13. My next R word is the word rigorous, based upon verse 14. The word rigorous. You see, when Zenos and Apollos came, Titus was to make sure that their needs were met, but Titus was to use this situation as a learning event. Verse 14 says, and I'm quoting now, let ours also learn to maintain good works. The word there, ours, here refers to the Christians on Crete. Paul wanted Titus to be a, well, a role model of hospitality and do it in such a way that the average believer there on Crete would know not only how to do it, but actually begin to do it. Now, you and I need to be rigorously doing good works, and the Bible says doing them particularly or especially to those that are part of the household of faith. I have one more R word here that comes from verse, uh, based upon verse 15. The word is relational. Believers are relational people. Listen again, the last verse, it says this, All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. And that's not a great uh, theologically deep verse, is it? You see, but when Paul penned this letter, he was probably at Miletus. There were other believers there, and all those with Paul sent their warm greetings to Titus and the believers on Crete. They probably didn't even know Titus, let alone the other believers, but they sent their greetings. You see, people who are born again and then also are actively involved in gospel work, there is a relationship, a relationship that often is stronger than even our earthly family ties. If you've been saved and been involved in gospel work, you know exactly what I mean here. 
Paul also sent his personal greetings to the believers at Crete. Some of those I am sure Paul had personally brought to Christ because Paul had worked with Titus there before Paul had left. Now, others of the people on Crete, Paul, I'm sure, had taught them in the scriptures, and they were stronger because of the teaching ministry of the Apostle Paul. There was a love between the believers there. There was a shared bond in Christ. Oh, friend, tell me, who Who was the person God used to bring you to know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Is that person still alive? Have you had any recent communications with them to thank them? Maybe, maybe if that person who led you to Christ has passed away and they're already in heaven, you could go and talk to one of their family members and express your gratefulness to them. A few years ago, I was uh, had the privilege of traveling and being on a wee bit of a vacation. We took a side trip on a Sunday. I went to a small, small church up in upstate New York. It was the church where I came to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I walked in. I didn't know anybody there anymore. It had been decades since I had been there. I walked in. They did not know who I was. As I made my introductions, some people began to recognize some names and they said, well, what brings you here? I said, I wanted to come back to the place that God used to see that I got the gospel. And I was downstairs and I took them to the place where I got to know Christ. I came to know Christ as Savior. It was a sweet time. And immediately there was this bond of fellowship and friendship and Christ-like love. Oh, beloved, if it's been a while since you have sent an actual handwritten note to your pastor thanking him for his own labor in God's word, perhaps you ought to do it and do it today. To grow healthy churches in and unholy cultures, uh, like the culture we're living in today, it's going to demand that there be a healthy love relationship between the saints and each of our churches not only within the church, but between gospel-preaching churches. Dear friend, if you're listening today and you don't know about the love of Christ, here's why. You don't know about the love of Christ because you are an enemy of God. Your sin has made you an enemy of God, but God loves you. God loves you so much, the Bible says, that he sent deliberately, willfully planned, and sent his son to take on human flesh that he could die for sinners just like you because he loves you. He's loved you with an everlasting love, but his love is not enough for you to have the sin stain removed. He had to die on the cross and shed his blood. You must receive him as your Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.